have any questions or comments? And moving right along. Okay, agenda item number six, Richard L. Jackson County Judge, public hearing, 9 a.m. adopted on the adopt a tax abatement policy for Wilson County. This is what we have a, a policy that we are considering to adopt, and this is the public hearing. If anybody has any questions or comments. No questions or comments? Then we're going to move right along to agenda item number seven, which is Jackson County Judge discuss and take action on approving the tax abatement policy. And I know the commissioners have had it for a while to review or had it over the weekend. And this is uh, just because we adopt it don't mean we have to do a tax abatement and we it also if we adopt it we can change it uh, consider the commissioner's court at a later date. I'll make a motion to approve the tax abatement policy. <coughs> motion. Second. Motion by Commissioner Morton, second by Commissioner Perdon that we approve the tax abatement policy as presented. Is there any more questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> motion carries. Okay. And agenda item number eight, Paul File, Commissioner Precinct 2, Ben Reed, EDC Executive Director, Charlotte D. Manus Nelson, EDC Assistant. Request the use of the courthouse grounds to set up the Christmas tree and host the Christmas tree lighting on December 3rd from 5.30 to 7.30. Mr. Reed. Yes. Uh, as we've done in the past, of course, we took last year off in the virtual tree lighting. Uh, we are just now requesting permission to be able to use the courthouse grounds to light the tree. Uh, we'll be uh, erecting our, uh, ourselves on uh, November 22nd through the 24th. Uh, to put the tree up and put the decorations as we had in the past with the Santa and the reindeer. I think Charlotte uh, bought a new picture frame where uh, more COVID affected people can come just take a picture behind it, have family pictures, it lights up, it's pretty neat. Uh, so we're just asking for that permission to use the grounds. I know the Chamber of Commerce normally does like a little market day that evening and then we're uh, contemplating maybe doing a movie in the park that night or uh, working with uh, the movie theater to do some movies after we finish at 7.30. So. We just like to make it a great community event, not just for the city, but for the county as well as we like the Christmas tree. I, uh, if y'all haven't seen in the past, it's probably one of the best ones in the in the county. So uh, along with uh, that, uh, the only other request uh, our city is wanting to make is if we can get the permission to maybe spruce up the area by the rose uh, bushes and the pecan tree. With your permission, I know there's a pecan tree that's, that's dead out there. So uh, with your guidance, they'd like to be able to coordinate with someone in your precinct, Paul, to maybe uh, spruce up that area with uh, some mulch and uh, things like that for the holiday season as people walk around it through the holiday season. So those are just our minor requests is to be able to uh, put the tree up on the 24th, 22nd through the 24th of November uh, coming up, uh, do the tree lighting on the 3rd, and then work with y'all to maybe spruce up that garden area right there by the the so. Do you have a proposed time for the actual lighting? Uh, yes, it'll be from 5.30 to 7.30. Seven it's going to be at 7 o'clock. Seven and we're going to send you all an agenda. You're more than, you're invited to come. So uh, we'd like to, to participate in that uh, tree lighting ceremony as well. So That's I think, December the 3rd? Yes, and we'll, and we'll be working with the uh, Historical Society. I've talked to Luana Newham Lewis, and I think they're doing some stuff in the jail as they want to kind of show off the, the, the jail house that evening as well. So uh, we're just making it a big, uh, well, making a community event to light the tree this year. Mm -hmm. So just asking for your permission on that. And then I guess the last side note, I'd just like to invite all y'all to, I kind of talked to Paul earlier, it's uh, we scheduled a groundbreaking for our new Burger King here on the highway on uh, this Friday at 10 o'clock. So I'll be sending y'all all an invite if y'all have time, if y'all like to show up to that event. Uh, we'd like for you to come and be a part of our groundbreaking at Ribbon Cuttings as we move forward, because we have a, a lot of them lined up this 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 next year. So, yeah, I make a motion that we go ahead and approve. I'll second. Motion by Commissioner Paul, second by Commissioner Wiley. We approve the lighting, the, the lighting, and in, in general, the whole. Your bank. Yeah. The whole, yes. Yeah. Did anybody get any more? And Paul. Any discussion. Object. I think it's 5:30 a.m. It should be p.m. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, well, we can have it all day. That's <laughs> okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank y'all so much. Okay. Mm -hmm. Agenda item number nine, Richard O. Jackson County Judge discuss and take action on appointing members to the sexual assault response team. And we have uh, Jennifer Fernandez here with the Guadalupe Valley. Family Violence Center, or sir. Uh, uh, okay, and we're probably going to be short a name, but do you want to ask for the members, or I'll, I'll give the members out of the, of the team. And then House Bill... 476. Yeah, 476 mandated that this team uh, be organized and they meet before December the 1st okay and this is going to happen in every county in our district Jennifer is going to be busy with us in Carnes County I know <coughs> and uh, our DA is going to have to have somebody on every one of them but uh, representative from uh, the sexual assault program which is Jennifer Fernandez and then we have two from the prosecutor's office Lorena Whitney and Mark Lindick. Okay, and then from the Sheriff's Office, we have Investigator Daria Fowler, uh, the Municipal Sheriff's Office, or PD, Gilbert Rodriguez, Investigator. Okay, from Behavioral Services, of Contractor Yvonne Moser. And then there's two more that are appointed out, I guess, in, uh, and those would be uh, Katie Queenie from the District Attorney's Office and Christina Macias from our County Attorney's Office. And a sexual assault, sexual assault nurse uh, from the hospital that is going to be supposedly delivered here pretty soon the name, and Bob hasn't got here with it yet. But when that name comes, it's gonna be added to this list. Okay, go ahead, Jennifer. <laughs> okay. um, <clears throat> well, I guess just to share a little background, um, Senate Bill 476 um, set forth a requirement that every county have an adult um, sexual assault response team. And so this is to encourage um, agencies to be able to um, work together um, to provide a more collaborative response um, to sexual violence and <clears throat> um, be less traumatizing for the victim as they go throughout that process. So. Um, one of the things that um, the team has as a first priority is establishing a protocol um, for how we respond to these types of cases. Um, Wilson County is a little bit ahead of curve on this because um, the work that we've already been doing with our coordinated response team, um, we did establish um, that protocol for an interagency response. Um, <clears throat> there's a few tweaks that we're gonna need to do to that. Um, but things that can be pretty simply done. We'll be providing um, training um, for the different agencies on the dynamics of sexual violence to, to help um, with that response and um, to be more trauma-informed and victim-centered. And we will also be preparing um, a biennial report for the court um, outlining <coughs> the um, number of reports that were made, um, number invest of investigations that followed out of that, as well as the number of indictments. And we'll also be examining community trends. Um, for example, if we're seeing um, suspected or confirmed human trafficking, um, substance facilitated sexual violence, just different things that we're seeing in the county. And so we can um, provide the best response possible to our survivors. Thank you. Yes, sir. Morning, Bob. Do you want to have a name for the sexual assault, yes. sexual assault nurse examiner? We would like uh, Della um, Manifold to be the primary and Gary uh, to CNO to be our... Okay, uh, who's this again? Della Manifold, D-E-L-L-A, -L -L -A, last name Manifold, M-A-N-I-F-O-L-D. What's that again? P Manifold, M-A-N-I-F-O-L-D. She's an RN in emergency room RN. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, and then Gary is so the alternate, <laughs> the chief nursing officer. And, and Gary, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, so, added to the list of want to go would be Bella Manifold. Yes. Okay. Uh, since we've got the entire list, I'll entertain a motion to accept this list for the sexual assault response team. I'll make a motion to accept the list for the sexual assault response team. Second. Motion by Commissioner Martin, second by Commissioner Perdona. We accept the list that we've read uh, to as the uh, sexual assault response team to comply with SB 476. Okay. And Jennifer's already got a date picked out for the have right. Tentatively, we'll have our first meeting on um, the 22nd of November. Okay. Any more discussion on this? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So motion carries. We've got the team. Thank y'all. Thank you, sir. I can get with, yeah. with Jennifer. This is going to be the I mean, these are all the same. This is Okay. Uh, this is Jennifer Martin. Yes. Thank y'all. Okay, moving to agenda item number 10, which you address some time to discuss and take action on cashing a CD under the Rimshell House and turn them over money over to the Wilson County Historical Commission. It has been requested from the Historical Commission that this is money that's money that's Historical Commission's money, but it's been in a CD for several years. And they are doing repairs on the old jailhouse museum. They want to use it for that. And I know we spoke about this last year sometime. What's the amount of the CD? That's what I want. About. It's a, the current balance right now is nine thousand thirty-four dollars and forty-eight cents. And it was opened in June of two thousand and fifteen. Um, and that's, <coughs> if you recall, that's the uh, the CD that we couldn't find any paperwork stating why the CD was open, so we're just under the assumption that money was moved there for the use. And it's it's labeled Dewey's Rimshell House CD. Is what it's and the Historical Commission is in charge of the Rimshell House. Historical Commission class, Historical Society. Uh, it so. does, um, it matures on June 11th of 2022, um, I don't, I didn't call the bank to ask them what the amount was to, um, to term it. It says forfeiture amount $1.49, so I don't know if that's what that means, but um, I can't imagine it would be a whole lot of money. I don't know exactly what it is to cash it in, though, you know, as an early cash out. But they want to cash in now as opposed to in June? Yes, we we approached this last year, and Commissioner Scorch said, let's wait for June. Well, nobody did anything in June. So mm -hmm. now the trailers came to my office and said, hey, well, they're working on the, on the jailhouse museum and need the money. Well, I'm also suggesting we approve the cash in the MSL CD. Motion by Commissioner Files, second by Commissioner Wiley, that we approve cashing in the CD and turn the money back over to the Wilson County Historical Commission. Yeah, so I'm thinking Christina will have to uh, call the bank to do that, and then we will have to then cut a check on the screen. Does that money go back into the general fund once the CD is cashed in? It probably would have to just because we don't have anything on our end file wire that system. So yes, I would think that's going to have to be where we can transfer it and then take it out of the general fund. And I can call the bank and just double check because normally when you do cash in CDs like that, it's going to be what the interest possibly could have been earned that year with 
rate that it's not going to be much. Maybe yeah. thir twenty, thirty dollars. Maybe I don't know. Don't quote me. I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's been the norm when you cash in a seat like that. And I'm wondering if we want at the time of cash out, if they ask you what we want to do with it. I wonder if we have the option of um, doing a cashier's check directly to the Wilson County Historical Commission, so yes. that way we have the record yes. that it's going from the CC to them. I double check. I can do that. That could be an option. Okay. Uh, just, may I make a comment? Not to the commission, but to the society. The commission does not have money for things like that. The commission can give it to the society. Yeah. Because the county deals with the commission. Yeah. Okay. Because the commission is under the county. So that's the action we have to take. So we can give it to the commission, then the commission can turn it over to the society. It's all the same people, am I correct? Yes, but there are, there are stipulations as to what kind of money and how much money. The society earns and dispenses the money. Clarence is the treasurer for both the commission and the society. But the only money, the way I understand what Clarence has told me in the past is that there are specific monies that they can have, like what y'all give us, what you, the county, give us. So it just seems like it would be more logical to make it directly to the society. So we have an annual payment that we have budgeted. It's, I think, $425, and that always gets paid to the commission. Right. And, and we make the check payable to the commission. Right. We deal with the commission. What you said is wrong. Uh, does it say where the money is? We don't have any record of where the money came from. No. I'm sure the commission record, I would think the commission record. Because we don't, like I said, we don't represent the commission as the commission cook, but we represent this. We won't represent the society. We represent the commission. So we wouldn't have had the money unless the commission would have asked us to do that. Even though, like I said, they're pretty much the same people on both oh, yeah. boards. Both oh, boards, yeah. Uh, yes, it is. And we appoint the commission every two years. So <clears throat> I believe that's, that's a step we're going to have to take. And hopefully, I don't think the commission is going to balk with not, not turning the money oh, over. No, no, no. I'm just, I was concerned about the types of money that the commission can accept as opposed to the society. That, that was my only concern. I agree, a good question to ask Clarence. But I, I feel more comfortable following these okay. rules because the okay. society, the society, the commission is part of the county, the society is not. So. That's the, that's the steps I'd like to take, and then the commission can turn it over to the society. I, I agree with you, Judge, and I've met with Clarence many times about it. I think that's what he would say, too. Okay. Okay. We have a motion on the floor? I do. Yeah. yeah. I second that. Very seconded. Paul and Commissioner Wiley. Is there any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the motion and hopefully they can get it straightened out. I can't I can't imagine them not, but we'll see. Okay. Moving to agenda item number eleven, Richard L. Jackson County Judge eleven <coughs> A discuss. Discussion of proposed final redistricting plan by the Commissioner's Court and any amendments and finalize the plan for adoption. Mr. Fye, is this where you wanted to speak? I was just going to see what's... I won't say anything until I see what's going on. Okay, well this... Uh, the map of uh, Leanne's got there. I have it up on the... It was downstairs. I know that, but I'm saying we don't have it like we had. No, sir. But the next, uh, the next item, we don't have any discussion on this one. No discussion, then we're going to move, into, move to agenda item 11B, discuss and take action on adopting 
the redistricting plan for the commission, county commissioner's precincts. I make a motion that we approve it as presented, Judge. I'll second it. Motion by Commissioner Wilde, second by Commissioner Perdoe that we uh, approve the map as presented and by the uh, bigger staff. It's in possession of Ms. Hochek right now. Has anybody got any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So we have new commissioner precincts. That's effective January the 1st. Yes. Thank you the staff yes. that I can get it to work precinct chairs. Uh, yeah. And this doesn't yeah. have the it doesn't have the voting boxes yet. We haven't got the voting. I haven't done that yet. That's the next step. That's, that's the next step. And Leanne has already been working diligently, diligently on that to get that done. So it's going to. It would be interesting, but hopefully we'll have a place to have an election in every voting precinct. It's going to be better for uh, precinct four. I can tell you. Not to that's just pressing forward, but it's going to work out good for us. We're going to try to try to get them all. I know there's been and there's been a lot of changes that were made to this one that were mistakes from before. Judge, is that available on the county website? Yes, this is posted yes, on the county uh, website. Uh -huh. Yes, you can get to it. You may not. They may not be very big, but and I don't it's think you can load up on your zoom in, right? Your okay. screen, yeah. yeah. I believe you can zoom in. Yeah. Okay. Moving along to agenda item 12. Richard L. Jackson, <coughs> County Judge, discuss and take action on cooperative agreement between Texas A&M Agri-Life Extension Service and Wilson County. Nicole, do you have anything you'd like to say? Please sign it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the agreement we have with the Agri-Life. Uh, uh, y'all got uh, copies of this sent to you? Yes. Uh, we're, uh, we have partnered with A&M Extension Service to provide the extension agents from Wilson County, from Wilson County to the public. And, uh, we compensate them, and the A&M compensates them. So, I'll entertain a motion to extend the service that we've been getting for years. I'll make a motion that we extend the service for the... Motion by Commissioner Perdoni, second. second by Commissioner File, that we extend the Texas A&M Agri-Life Extension Service and with, with Wilson County. Is there any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Yes, we we approve it. Okay. We'll sign it. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I guess other than can this be the original? Okay. Okay, moving on to agenda item 13. <coughs> Larry Wiley, Commissioner of Precinct 4, Jim Stewart, County Sheriff, discuss and take action on the certificate pay for a commission personnel in the Sheriff's Office. Well, I had a, uh, I don't know if we can, I had a request that we go into executive session to discuss this. Dealing with payroll and individual salary. Catherine? Um, and it's to discuss, to discuss individuals pay raise or pay salary. Well, um, pay is 
C certificate pay for commissioned personnel. Yeah. Uh, pay anything to do with money that y'all do is public information. Are you going to be talking about individual names? Yes. Of people? Okay. I'll make a motion, Judge, are we going into executive session? Per article. 551.071. Motion by Commissioner File. To go into executive <coughs> session. Second. Second by Commissioner Padola. To go into executive <coughs> session pursuant to uh, section 551.071 through 076 of the Texas Government Code. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? So we at 928. We're going to be going into executive session. I'd like to have the sheriff, uh, the uh, auditor, the and sheriff, auditor, and HR. 